Cage Warriors 148 happens in London, England on New Year's Eve. And I just so happen to be talking to one of the men that is competing on that card. He is one of the most exciting fighters pound for pound in all of the UK. And he joins me here today. His name is Mr. Nathan Fletcher. Nathan, thank you so much for being on my show, my friend. You are a guy I've been wanting to talk to you for quite some time. Thank you very much for having me, mate. That was a very kind introduction there. I appreciate all the nice words you said about me. So, yeah, thanks very much for having me on. Well, I will tell you this. Um, I look at your gym and I look at guys like you. I look at guys like your teammate, Adam Colin. There's something really special going on at your gym. We all talk about Molly. We all talk about Patty. But there are so many other guys and gals that are part of your gym that make it one of the premier gyms in all of Europe. I was hoping we could start there. Next Generation Liverpool, what is that experience like? Can you talk about some of your teammates and just how you guys are able to make each other so uh, so cut, so freaking crisp, so amazing in the cage? Obviously, that's not a solo project. That's an all hands on deck kind of thing. And I think all of you are making each other better. Yeah, listen, that's uh, that's definitely something. I've been asked this question a lot lately because of the success that Paddy's having, because of the success that Molly's been having. But it goes deeper than that. Like you said, our team is full of killers. And I think we've got a nice mixture between like that small family, intimate feel where we're getting a lot of attention, a lot of one-on-one -on -one attention from the coaches. And it's like we're not quite a super camp, as you'd say, like some of these big gyms, ATT, Alpha Male, stuff like that. But we've got a good number of killers um, so yeah, like I said, we're we're not quite like a super camp where we're the mats jam packed and coaches are flying away every weekend to corner teammates. But we have got a good stable of fighters at each weight class. I've got a good three or four training partners at bantam weight. Adam's got the same at lightweight and um, featherweight. We've got probably right through from fly to we've got Matt Bonner at middleweight. Real good, um, a real good staple of guys. So. The gym's absolutely flying at the minute. We're, we're carrying a lot of momentum from, from all the wins, especially Paddy getting a big win last night. Um, all the wins on Cage Warriors this year. Adam Cullen's on an absolute tear. Luke Riley coming through the ranks. Um, so, yeah, next gen's a good place to be at the minute. Let's talk about Adam for a second, and then we'll get to you. There's just so many things about that guy. Um, but I will say this, first and foremost, as skillful of, of a fighter as he is, he makes me laugh so hard the things that he says what he posts wearing the crown after he beats guys in the cage he's quite a character can you talk to me a little bit about that guy is he like that all the time yeah adam's absolutely insane mate he is he is around the bend he's uh it's interesting about adam because he's got that silly side to him and i think it's coming through more now with like his confidence is increasing and he's starting to believe in himself a lot more so he's putting it out there for the world to see but he's, he's always had that silly side but then he's also a very serious cerebral fighter so there is sort of two sides to have an absolute tear at the minute he's a joker but like don't be fooled by all that do you know what I mean you can, you can half see it's, it's the same with like say the likes of Colby Covington like he puts on this stick that he's you know not taking himself too seriously he's giving guys a load of shit but behind the scenes Adam's working hard and he takes his career very very seriously and um, so much so that he, he you know he's, he works a full-time job as well he gets up after doing 12-hour night shifts comes in the gym after like a couple hours kip and, and he's sparring top level guys so he's uh he's putting it in don't be fooled by the the bravado of all the crown and stuff that's that's the gimmick but um, <laughs> it's good to see him as it's good to see him showing that side of himself as well do you know what i mean i think that's kind of the route he's going down now and people are people are going to love him or hate him but it's going to get it's going to get people watching him he said, uh, when I last interviewed him on my show, I asked him, we were just talking about his skills, and he said something that was really hilarious to me. And he was just like, what if what if I'm not any good? What if I can only just beat up French kids? And I thought that shit was so funny. Like, yeah. <laughs> it, it, But it was like an authentic thing. Like He said it with a twinkle in his eye, but like that's a, that sort yeah. of humor, it just made me laugh so hard. But I look at this guy, and and you are both similar in the sense where you're both branded and established fight finishers. You both have built up a reputation of figuring out a way to dismantle every man that you face in the cage. That is a gift. That is a talent, but there's a flip side to that. 
It also comes with a lot of expectations. It also comes with your supporters that we just get accustomed to it. We get spoiled by it, right? So it's like, oh yeah, Nathan chokes people out. That's just what he does. He's going to figure out a way to like choke this guy out. And and I pause there because I sp- I feel especially with guys that are on the climb like you, it's like you you get that reputation. But then sometimes you see guys that put themselves in hot water trying to hunt for that finish when it's not there, uh, whether they're trying to knock somebody out and, you know, they're swinging for the fences and they get countered or they go for uh, the submission over the position and they find themselves in a really disadvantageous spot. All of a sudden they're getting a face mashed in because they went for something that wasn't there. Now they're on bottom mm-hmm. and someone else has top. I wanted to pause there because when I look at you, like I said before, you choke people out. That's what you do. You're very proficient at it. How do you not let your past of being like a fight finisher, like overcome you, right? Like, how do you not yeah. like let those expectations like build up and just let the fight come to you as it naturally would? Okay, so that's a good question. And there's a lot of like different parts to dissect there. So I'll do my best to break it down. So like essentially one, that is... That is the style me and Adam both have. And I think a lot of guys from our gym finish fights because our training is dictated towards finishing fights. I think that scoring criteria now, the judges favor damage and fight finishing sequences. So even if you don't get the finish, if you're the one actively looking to finish the fight, that's going to go in your favor if it ends up going the distance. Uh, Two, I have massive faith in my conditioning. So does Adam. So we can push a good pace. And I know that even if I'm hunting for the finish and it doesn't come, I'm going to have the cardio to hold up to push for at least 15 minutes. It's something I'll learn in my title fight. Uh, it's a bit different when it comes to a five-round fight, but at least for 15 minutes, I've got that pace where I can go 100 mile an hour nonstop. Um, so in terms of pressure going forward, the pressure I've put on myself is on pressure with people expecting me to finish fights. Do you know what I mean? I expect myself to finish fights. Looking at my next opponent now, someone who's, who's never fought on cage where he is, he's got a half-decent record, but he hasn't fought anybody with like a real, real good resume. I am mm-hmm. putting a lot of pressure on myself. I should finish him. I see myself top of the sport, right? So, if what I think about myself is true, and if I am who I say I am, I should be finishing guys like that. And that's not like a an expectation type thing. That's just like I know where my skill sets at, and like I'm looking at his skill set in comparison to mine, and I think that I should be going in there and getting the finish. And uh, that's what I've done in in my last six, seven fights in gauge ways anyway. So I don't think this one's any different. And it also goes previous to that. Um, you did more of the same at the amateur level as well. Uh, same, same, same get up. You're able to use your jujitsu. You're able to use your ground game uh, to find finishes, but you also have knockouts. Um, you have a few knockouts on your, on your resume as well. I feel though that there's still so many elements of your game that we don't know about. You're finishing guys. You're, 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 you're able to, fight bouts a certain way but i know that you're working through disadvantageous positions when you're in camp you're 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 doing a whole bunch of things that we don't necessarily see come fight night what are some of the areas of your game that you've really been working at over the years that we may we the fans at home may not be able to see when you're in the cage for 15 minutes that is the crazy thing about mma isn't it like the fans literally see this in minutes or less most of the time he's just short snippet of your game um on on that platform that fight that that one time maybe maybe what three times a year if you're lucky four times a year so mm-hmm. there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes leading up to that uh, in the past i've put big emphasis on wrestling jiu-jitsu conditioning these are things in 50 months so there's been a long time out the cage i'm a completely different fighter my, the smoothness in my striking, the confidence that I've got in my range control, in setting up takedowns without rushing, a uh, dominant position, more violent ground and pound. These are all things that I've been adding into my game over the last 15 months. And I'm so excited because I feel like the improvements you make camp to camp, they are maybe noticeable uh, in fights. But for me to have this this big gap of time out, like the fans are going to, shocked with the the fighter that comes back in on new year's eve now i'm gonna look completely different to what i have in the past use this performance to catapult myself forward and carry on progressing my career and pick up where i left off at the end of 2021 i think we're hitting on something that i think is really important 
who are some of the top prospects in cage warriors? Like who are the guys that are, are close? And I think of, you know, the Hardwicks, I think of you, I think of Adam. Um, and there are many, many others. You built all this momentum. The title fight didn't go your way. And we'll talk about that in a second, but coming into 2022, the plan from when the title fight ended compared to today, now here we are a year and some change later, that wasn't part of your plan. I know it wasn't. There are two different uh, cards that you were supposed to be on. And for whatever reason, you've had opponents drop out. And, and I know that there have been a host of other things that you probably haven't even talked about that nobody else knows about. But I want to talk about matchups. I want to talk about these cards that you were supposed to be on. You were supposed to be on Hughes versus Vuchenic. That never happened. And then I want to say earlier in the summer you were supposed to fight. That one dropped off as well. How frustrating has that been for you? Two different cards, various opponents have run away from you or have gotten hurt or whatever the case may be. How frustrating is that, that you are just now making your first fight of 2022 at on the very last day of 2022? Yeah, it almost seems fitting to me, to be honest, that with the year I've had. So obviously in the moment, these things are extremely frustrating, especially when you look at the circumstance that it's under. I'm on such a tear. I'm on a roll. Everybody's jumping on the bandwagon. I'm, I'm thinking my teammate Paddy's just been signed to the UFC, picked up a big win last September, blew up, become mm-hmm. a megastar. Now it's time. My title fight, all, this, all these eyes are going to be on me, these new eyes. I'm Paddy's teammate. And then my career gets halted there. Mm-hmm. I get injured at the start of 2022. I have multiple pullouts this year. And here we are 15 months later, and I have not had my time to shine. It's been... It's been tough to say the least, but I'm in a position now where looking back on this crazy year, I'm actually thankful for everything that's happened because the man I am now, and I, and I know this without even stepping back in the cage, I am so much better, so much more prepared for the career that I'm going to have based off what I've gone through these past 12 months. Uh, that's down to simply all the adversity that I've had to deal with. It's so true what they say, like, the growth you get from facing adversity that is and i'm going to use that to springboard my career forward uh, it's going to start on new year's eve so to answer your question yeah it's been extremely frustrating in the moments but the position i'm in now how i'm feeling three weeks out from finally getting to make that walk again on the last day of the year i'm in a good spot i think your story is a really good demonstration of why i am of the opinion that mixed martial arts is the most difficult the most complex the most challenging sport to be a participant in psychologically and, and physically. Uh, When I think about your last fight, it didn't go your way. Right. Well, I want to talk about that one, but it's that gap, right? Because you lose a bad game in like football, there's a match next week. Right. So it's like, okay, well, we, 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 we made some mistakes. It didn't go our way, but we can, get three points next week. Not a big deal. Like we'll go out there and we'll do what we need to do. Fighting's not like that. Like you don't really know the next time you're going to fight. And in your case, you had no way of knowing from the loss to Wooding till today that 15 months would lapse before you get another opportunity. To get that that regular competition, if they have a bad game, they can dust themselves off, go again a week later. This loss has been sitting with me for 15 months. I've, I've grown exponentially from that loss. You know what I mean? I, I've used it. This sport is there's so many ways to lose. There's so many ways to win. So undoubtedly, in my career going forward, it could happen again. Do you know what I mean? But I feel like the lessons I've learned from this have just prepared me so much better for, like I say, the career I'm going to have. And I genuinely believe because of this time, not only like despite it, but because of it, I'm going to go on to be a world champion in the sport. So um, yeah, 15 months I've been waiting and it's going to feel so sweet. I actually get emotional thinking about what it's going to be like to get back in that cage. And on New Year's Eve as well, the last day the year it's a, it's a crazy night to be making my return I, I would say there are two cards if i if, if i were in your position that i would want to be on the one, one already happened it was hughes versus Vichenik at uh cage warriors uh 145 i believe and then it's this one so it's like as long as you can get on one of those two like you'll be fine because this is going to be an absolute banger of a card you you, you look at it from top to bottom excluding your fight uh, there's some really other uh, interesting ones as well it's a massive card it's going to be on a special night i think it's going to be a hell of an opportunity for you 
Christian Duncan, the middleweight champ, defending his belt against Taylor, which is like a crazy good matchup, interesting matchup. You've got Wilson Hayes on the card now as well. Um, so the American can th- they're bringing over some good talent from America. It's going to be really interesting. I feel like there's going to be a lot of eyes on this card, and like you say, it's a good platform, and I fully intend to use this platform to put myself back in the limelight. I'd have no doubt on back on the train after this one. Your um last opponent, uh, and he was the champion at the time, Dominic Wooding. He ended up losing a decision uh against uh, Martioni at Cage Warriors one forty four. He's no longer the champion now. You have an opportunity to find yourself in it with the belt changing hands. There's another opportunity potentially for you to capture that title. If you go out there and do what I think you're going to do, that puts you at seven and one. Martioni, he's at seven and one. That's got to be the fight to make if if all things go well for you. No, do you know who Martignoni's one loss is? I, I'm very aware of who he lost to. <laughs> So, so I'm thinking makes, to myself, that, doesn't it make sense though for him to have to fight you? Yeah, yeah. Well, it does. He he, he called me out. He beat Wooden, and he said, "I want to fight Fletcher next." He was very respectful in doing so. And yeah, look, I think that's the fight to make. We'll see. I've been out for a year. There's been some other guys making a bit of noise. You've got the likes of Kalen Locker in the division, uh, who I also want to fight. You've got the likes of Reese McEwen, who I also want to fight. Um. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. I'm obviously not looking past the Italian that I've got on uh, on New Year's Eve, but I've got a good track record against the Italian contingents. And um, listen, if Cage Warriors want to make that fight again, I believe there's a good storyline there with the MMA math, the triangle of me beating Martignoni, Wooden beating me, and then him beating Wooden. It makes a lot of sense. Um, so we'll see what happens. I feel like inevitably that Cage Warriors title is going to be mine at some point before I go on to the UFC. Uh, and it could be could be the fight to make after this one. But like I said, focused on this Italian. And then once we get that done, we'll look we'll look past that then. Let's talk about your opponent, Giordano. I hope I said his name correctly. He's six and one. He's making his Cage Warriors debut. And I want to pause there for a second because this guy could have made his debut against somebody completely different. He could have taken a much easier fight. Him and his camp, they've decided to sign off on this one and, and take the fight. I don't care if this guy comes in and you smoke him in the first five seconds of the fight. I have nothing but love and respect for this guy for taking this fight. This is a difficult freaking fight. He should get credit for uh, stepping up and agreeing to fight you, in, in my opinion. I don't think a lot of us really view fights in that regard. We just kind of view it like, oh, okay, well, this is what's going to happen, but look at it from his perspective. It's like, you're one of the toughest 35ers in all of the UK. And he's taking this fight, making his cage warriors debut against you. That's a fighter. That is a fighter right there. Like you can't run from difficult fights. And I feel a lot of fighters do. He's not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's true. Look, that's how I'm seeing it. He's signed to fight me. So he believes he can eat other bantamweights already signed to cage warriors already with winning streaks on cage warriors. I've turned down fights with me this year. So I've got massive respect for Giordano for taking this fight. And I'm made up, to be honest. I've got a young 25-year-old. He's six and one, same record as me. I imagine that he sees himself beating me, progressing onto the UFC and, and being a champion in the sport. That's what I want. That's exactly the situation I'm in. I'm 24. I'm six and one. I see myself being a world champion. So I want to welcome all comers. I want to take on the biggest challenge possible because I'm a competitor and I believe I'm better than everybody, especially in cage warriors. Do you know what I mean? So um, fair play to this kid. I'm happy. I'm happy he's taking the fight. I'm happy with the opponent. He's a young, hungry, game, confident lad. And that's exactly what I want. All the other fighters who turn me down, like you said, they're trying to cherry pick fights. They're trying to flag the way to the top, but that's not how, how, the, how the game works anymore. I mean, we had a chat before we started off air and it was, you know, we're saying, look at the likes of, Paul Hughes having to go through Jordan Vucenic, all the tough competition he's faced. Um, Harry Hardwick's another one. Sorry, George Hardwick, the champion, 11-1 and one now. Do you know what I mean? Like You've got to be making serious statements to even get noticed by the UFC. So if guys think they can turn down fights with me and beat a bunch of crabs to pad the record, they're just nobody's going to take notice of that. Do you know what I mean? So fair play to Giordano. He, he's game, he's confident, he knows what he's doing. But he's a bit off more than he can chew. 
this is my perspective on people who cherry pick fights. It's honestly like doing steroids, right? Because it's like you do steroids, you get huge, you get jacked in the gym, but eventually, eventually you have to stop doing steroids. You can't do it all the time. And when you're not on the juice, it's like, oh shit, well then now what? Like, what am I going to do? You lose all your like, gains. I'm, right? What am I going to do now? Yeah. And, 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 and I feel it's very, it, 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 I see that parallel, right? It's like you, you, you've taken a bunch of cans, you fought a bunch of cans, but then what happens when you fight that one good guy on a big stage? Mm-hmm. You've never been in a position like that. You may have to fight, you know, <laughs> you're, you're nine and oh, and you're fighting a guy who's seven and four, but guess what? That seven and four guy fought the freaking toughest, baddest, nastiest dude in the room to get where he did. And guess what? That seven and four guy is probably going to fuck you up. See, even on the cage warriors level, one of my teammates, Liam Gittins, uh, fought the other week and a lot of good wins. He's had a couple of losses here and there, but he's fighting the best all the time. He goes out there, he puts on exciting fights, goes out there and faces the best at four five. Before I let you go, Nathan, I wanted to just level set here. You beat this guy. That improves your record. You advance to seven and one. Um, and it, it, it's just a massive card. It's a massive opportunity. Uh, and I'll say it for you. I know you've already mentioned about like, hey, I'm not looking past this kid. I'm taking him very seriously. I know what I have to do to go in there. But humor me for a second. With a seven and one record, a new calendar year, a new slate of fights. Can you tell me a little bit about like your 2023? What is it that you're aspiring to accomplish in the next year? Yeah, I think I'm going to have a huge year springboarded off the back of this victory guy. Very serious, of course. I'm. I've spent 12 months preparing for a fight, so I'm definitely not looking past the world's my oyster. We're back on top. Do you know what I mean? I've got a win over the current champ. Uh, Dominic Woodin's no longer in the division. So a rematch with him, which one's there floating around. Uh, as I said before, Reese McEwen, if he wants, um, and Martin Yoni as well. So I'm really excited to hear about, um, you know, this upcoming slate of uh, Cage Warriors cards that are going to materialize. I hope to see your name on uh, one of the first uh, uh, cards of 2023. You got you got a lot of fights uh, still ahead of you. I'd love to see you be able to like build back on that momentum, put a streak together just to kind of remind everybody who it is that you are and what makes you a special fighter. I look forward to seeing that very, very soon. I wanted to give you Nathan an opportunity though, before I let you go. Um, If there's anyone that you would like to thank, if you have any supporters or sponsors that you need to talk about, I want to give you that chance before we sign off. Yeah. This year, like I said, it's been an extremely difficult year for me. And I wouldn't have been able to get through it without the support of my sponsors, my friends and family. I'm very, very blessed and very, obviously, after the come up and, and the loss, I had a few people drop off and, and you know, ghost me. But um, for the most part, the people who have been there from the beginning were still standing by the filters. Jack Harper, the macro chef, uh, been nice considering I've not had an opportunity to, to you know, really represent them yet. So, um, yeah, to all them who are coming on board, you'll see them on my fight kit. When I walk out, there's about eight or nine companies that have been supporting me this year. And without them, I wouldn't have been able to push through and, and take the benefits away from this adversity that I think I have. So I'm very, very, very thankful to all them. And then, of course, my family and friends, my girlfriend, everyone who's in my inner circle. These are always great support. You always have been. And nothing's changed there. So I'm eternally grateful to all of those people. And I am grateful for you being a part of my show. I appreciate your time. Uh, Everybody make sure that you watch Cage Warriors 148. It happens on New Year's Eve. Uh, It's going to be an absolute amazing card. It's going to be one that you are not going to miss. And there's a reason why Nathan Fletcher is on this card. And if you've never seen him fight before, you're about to find out why they put him on this particular card. Nathan, appreciate your time. We'll be doing it again very, very soon, my friend. My man, thank you very much. I really appreciate you giving me this platform as well to come on and give a little insight into my story and this exciting time in my career. So I do really appreciate that. It goes a long way. So thanks, mate. Cheers, man. We'll do it soon.